Hello, hockey fans. The Minnesota Hockey Connection is on the air. We're on the air for the next hour, uh, half hour. We're on yeah. the air for the next half hour. I'm Kenny Callagher, along with Jerry Burrow. And Jerry, a lot to going on. We're at the uh, final stages of the regular season of the NHL. Uh, the playoffs will begin shortly. Uh, college hockey's Final Four is set to take place this week. And there's just a lot of things in the news. And one of the things that uh, you brought to my attention from the Superior Telegram Another milestone for O'Handley, Superior native, sets a USHL record with his 600th victory. And uh, talk about uh, talk about PK O'Handley. Uh, did you know who this yeah. guy was? Or? I didn't know he's from Superior. I know okay. who he was and that, and All I know right. he's a great coach. And yeah. he coached at Waterloo for years. And they've always had some good teams. He's well known, he's uh, well respected, and all of a sudden, I see this, and uh, he's from Superior. I didn't know that part. <laughs> uh, played uh, Superior Senior High School in 1985, and uh, boy, that's a big uh, that's a big ac- accomplishment. 600th yeah. USHL victory as a head coach, PK O'Handley of Superior. And uh, who's he coaching? The Waterloo team, huh? Yeah, Waterloo Blackhawks. All right. Great, great. Yeah. That's good stuff. Right. And uh, we got the Hobie D- Baker hat trick finalist, you know. We got uh, none of them from our area. Now, I don't recall hearing the hat trick finalist. Is this something new they've attached they to always the come. No, they always come back down to the final three. Okay. They have final lists like the top All ten, right. and they okay. always have the final three, and they... These are the ones they sent to the Hobie Baker uh, Awards. And that, that'll be the Friday between uh, the semis and the final game in uh, Frozen Four. Uh, the three are Michigan freshman forward Kyle Connor, Boston College junior goaltender Thatcher Demko, and Harvard senior forward Jimmy Vesey. Yeah, Demko is the one, that, the goalie that kind of beat uh, UMD. On the final game of the region. You know, I did not know that Kyle Connor was a freshman. Yeah. He's a dynamic that was a gr- player. Oh, that that first line of, uh, <laughs> they call it, uh, what do you call it, CCM line. All Over right. Over there in Michigan, and they they have him, and they have Modi, and uh, they have Comfort, JT. And, uh, boy, what a line. It's probably the best line in hockey. North Dakota has a great line, too, but... Uh, that line, but this uh, K- Kyle Connor, he can score. 71 points, 35 goals, both led the nation. Yeah. Jeez. Freshman. Yeah, that's so, great. That's amazing. So I mean, we might have our third freshman uh, ever win the Hobie Baker. It's possible. Well, that's great. And then the uh, the Frozen Four, the Final Four, if you will, for men's hockey this weekend. Yeah, and I'll be or down there. Week. Yeah, I'm going to be down there. And um, the first game is Thursday. I think it's 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock. How is it later? I forget now. <laughs> but uh, Quinnipiac will be playing uh, Boston College. And then the uh, night game will be Denver, two NCHC teams, Denver and uh, North Dakota. So we still got some local Minnesota kids. I was just looking at Jerry, some. if you were a betting man, and I know you're not, who would you put your money on? I think number one team in the country, Quinnipiac. All right. I just think they'll, they're they going to do it this time. North Dakota's bringing a tough squad. Oh, yeah. But uh, Quinnipiac, believe it or not, has uh, five Minnesota kids. They got these two kids from Roseville that never played high school, but they played at Shattuck, and then they went uh, to USHL. And it's Cannon and Bo Pi- Piper. And uh, then they got Tommy Schultz. Shut from uh, he played at uh, Tonka, Minnetonka. Derek Smith from Apple Valley, and Jacob Myers was uh, he's from Minnetonka, but I think he played at uh, Benel. So that's five kids from Qu- Quinnipiac. 
Well, we learned after the Bulldogs uh, lost uh, their game. Uh, who did they lose to? Boston College. Boston College. Then the uh, the exodus began. Casimir Cascasuel, goaltender, off to the Toronto Marlies. That's the only one, though. Tony yeah. Cameronissi. Yeah. Well, he's senior. Right. Right. They're, they're seniors, so you can't come true, true, left. true. <laughs> and uh, Willie Corrin also went to Toronto. Yeah. And it was neat because Cameronissi gets his first uh, professional goal, but the uh, that game it was April first. No fooling. Casimir Cascasuo gets his first <laughs> professional win. And also on the bench is the backup goalie, Alex Stalock. Stalock. <laughs> My goodness, you had four, well, former Bulldogs yeah. in the lineup for the Toronto Marlies. And I know people have been saying, who are the Marlies? They're the <laughs> AHL, the farm club, if you will, of the Toronto Maple Leafs. There you go. And uh, Andy Relinsky just signed a pro contract, and he's with uh, the An Anaheim Ducks farm team down in San, San Diego. San yeah. Diego goals. Now, he had, uh, did I hear correctly that he said he was staying and not going, and then this came up, or? When he, um, Walensky. He's a senior, so he was gone. Ah, sure. He's gone no matter yeah, what. True, true, yeah, true, 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 true. He was uh, drafted in. Uh, Maybe I'm thinking of a Trent Klatt, <laughs> <laughs> who resigned as head coach of the Grand Rapids Thunderhawks. Oh. Who, and and tomorrow, it, what, tomorrow he'll be on the team. The next day he'll be off the team. Well, let, let's talk about this. Trent Klatt uh, resigned after being quoted that he would not be fired or leave the Thunderhawks unless he was told to leave. And he leaves, and then uh, here we hear now he's he's rescinded that, and he's coming back. Yeah. Do we need to look into this too much? Is there more here than meets the well, eye? There's a lot of things going on. They, they've got some problem with the kids getting out of control and I, no. I'm sure they're gonna, kids out of control and they're gonna high fix, school they're gonna fix it and they're, I think there's gonna be some punishment they might get some suspensions well you had the one player that missed the uh, state tournament the tournament my goodness right and so I mean I'm sure there'll be some punishment um, game on you know they won't be playing next year when season starts but we'll, well see Micah Miller uh, his uh, is going to St. Cloud State right but they've got three returning players. They're going to have a heck of a line. If they return. If they return. So, That's okay. the big thing. Uh -huh. See if they, Where would they go? Uh, USHL or okay. the development team. All right. They, they try it out for the development team. They're asked to try out there. So we'll see. If there's punishment, I, there, there's a good possibility they'll make the game. We don't want, we got to play some games, so they might. We'll see. Yeah. Time will tell. Sure, sure. <laughs> but like you say, they're kids. So, UMD. So, they, we lost, um, what, we lost about, we, how many forwards did we lose? We lost uh, Farley and Cameron Nisi, two of the bigger ones, and we lost about three other role player forwards. And I was just looking at some of the forwards coming, coming in this year. Joey Anderson from the development team. And Riley Tufty, Mr. Hockey. And then we got, um, on defense, we got Hilderman from the Fargo USHL. Jared, he's a Canadian, Saskatchewan. And then we need a goalie. Yes, we do. We need a goalie now. And I guess, I mean, this kid was going to come three years ago. So Hunter Miska from North Branch, he's a... Uh, Played over at the development team, and then he's been down in the USHL in Dubuque. And he'll be playing the playoffs with Dubuque this um, spring here for the USHL. So he's our goalie of the future, it looks like, unless they can find someone else. But um, they only have one other goalie, Nick uh, Dury. He was uh, the backup, second no, backup. I, I know in the past years the uh, Bulldogs have had three, even three goalies well, they, on the roster. Well, they always have three. They always have three. Oh, yes. So who's going to be the three goalies on the roster? They need. They have to pick up another one. They only have two right now. Boy, this is uh, quite a predicament they're in. They, I don't recall them ever being in a situation where they haven't had a outgoing senior. Well, yeah. I mean, Cascasulo, he was a sophomore. So this is a quite a, uh, uh, a quandary, if you will, for the yeah. Bulldogs. And then, and then uh, there's some players, I mean, like um, Nick Sweeney that plays in the USHL that left high school early from Lakeville South. Uh, they might have to bring him in, too, or he might be coming in already. 
And uh, I'll tell you what, I like everything but what's going on with the goaltending right now. It's you know hard what? to put a lot of pressure on a young kid. To, yeah. you know, he's not really young. He's 21 years old. But uh, UMD is due for a local goalie to uh, be back on this team. Not since, uh, geez, maybe one of the cool boys, uh, Rob Anderson from Superior. How about uh, there's a little kid from uh, Denville. Alander. There you go. What's his status? There you go. Hey, coach, call up River. <laughs> River will come in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Mm. Yeah. But uh, they were some some of the UMD assistant coaches were out at uh, the Wilderness game on uh, Saturday night, and I think they're looking at the Wilderness goalie. So we'll see. Well, that's interesting because Cascasuo, of course, came right. from uh, the Wilderness. Right. And uh, here he is now a professional, and not too many pros or uh, players from that league become professional hockey players. And uh, this is a great feather in the cap for uh, the Minnesota Wilderness based in Cloquet. Right. And uh, talking about them, uh, they're just um, getting close for their playoffs. Let's see, do I have what they, where they're at? Yeah, they're... Um, Right now they're in second place, and they got one game left. And Janesville is one point behind with two games left. So it's going to go right down to the end who's second and who's third. And but they'll then, make the playoffs. Yeah, they're in the playoffs. But uh, the, the difference will be is their first uh, playoff uh, series will be if they go on the road or stay home. Sure. So... You know how what they did last year. They went on the road for the whole playoffs things, and then they won the whole thing. An improbable <laughs> run to the uh, Robertson Cup Championship team for or game for the Minnesota Wilderness, and by golly, they did it, and it was great. And we hope that they can repeat it this year. You bet. Right, and uh, I was just at the game this weekend, and it's kind of funny. Saturday night, there was five Duluth East kids playing. There was a Cloquet kid, Kobe Bender. Um, Hermantown kid, uh, Cole Kepke, is playing yeah. for the wellness. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, who's the other? There was one other kid, but locally. But that's pretty good. That's awesome. Oh, Aaron really Miller. Is. Oh, from Superior. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, how's that's his play? Good. How's he doing? Yeah, he's playing. He played lock pretty good on uh, Saturday night. He was a dynamic high, uh, high school player. And he got in a fight. He did. He's not a fighter. Well, they got in a fight. <laughs> dropped the gloves. He yeah. was. Uh, they kicked right. them both out of the game. Ooh. <laughs> and is all that right. toward the end okay. of the regulation? <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> okay. Well, what about the, um, the Minnesota Wild? Oof. They're not ending the season the right way. Well, but you know. I tell you what, I they're still. It's almost impossible for them not to win. Uh, get into the playoffs as a wild card. Yeah, they're, uh, that went over Chicago, what was it, March 29th. Uh, big win. Uh, they took the season series from Chicago. First time the Wild had, had ever done that, and the first time a team had done that in a long time. I don't recall all the, the details there, but they beat Chicago on the 29th, and uh, they haven't won a game since. They lost to Ottawa 3-2, to Detroit 3-2, three three to two. Two, got smoked up in Winnipeg Sunday night 5-1. to one. They'll play Tuesday against San Jose, the final regular season game, Calgary, uh, Saturday, April 9th, 6 o'clock in St. Paul. Wait a minute. They're taken away from the Frozen Four. <laughs> That's the same night as Frozen Four finals. <laughs> Just kidding. But uh, you know what's so funny? They're playing bad, but Colorado's playing worse. <laughs> they're so lucky. Aren't they still have the five-point lead? Yeah. With two games, they can win so here's one of these two. The only way they can not make the playoffs now, they got to lose their last two, and Colorado has to win their next three. All right. They got three games left, and the Wild have two. So the Wild have to lose their last two. And Well, never say never, but don't worry about what your opponent's doing. Worry about what you're doing and yeah. win those games. At least win one of them. But, uh, geez, I'll tell you, this team is such a funny team, up and down, and they beat good teams. They beat Chicago, and you lose to Ottawa? Well, the way it looks right now, if they make that eighth, that second wild card spot, um, Dallas or St. Louis is going to be their teams because Dallas has, is in top 105 points and St. Louis 103. And Dallas has two games left and St. Louis three. So 
So you're projecting early. I think they're going to be playing Dallas. All right. Well, that'd be great. I mean, why not? Uh, the former franchise that used to be the Minnesota North Stars, let's get it on. Let's play them. And let's, let's get it uh, on. Hey, what's us sound? Give them the business. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that'd be awesome. And then out in the uh, Pacific uh, Division, um, Anaheim and L.A. are in for sure. And San Jose and uh, Nashville will be fighting for that third spot. Then um, Nashville will still be a wild card if they don't make that third spot. You know, it's so. funny because the start of the season, geez, it just doesn't seem that long ago when Anaheim started terribly. Well, they did. And you thought maybe this was uh, the beginning of the end for them. And then... Yeah, they're only seven points off to the top team in the Western Division. But how about the statistic, Jer, where none of the Canadian teams will be in the playoffs? What did they say? That's the first time in how many years? 1970. That's when they only had uh, Toronto, Montreal. Well, I think Vancouver might have been up there then, too, right around that time. But nonetheless, I mean, you've got no Canadian teams in the NHL playoffs. Mm -hmm. Wow, it hasn't happened since 1970. Probably Edmonton was there too. 1970? Yeah, pretty close, yeah. But that's still, that's a, now there's seven teams and not one of them making the playoffs. That's amazing. It is. It really is. <laughs> and that's, that's all they do up there is hockey and something else. It's I guess. their religion. <laughs> yeah. Why? The religion's not good this year. Yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> the, uh, the holy pucks and the holy sticks are going to be left for the Americans, well, at least the American teams. But, you know, that's the thing about Canada and Canadians in general. Excuse me, they've got, there's so many Canadians that play. There's Canadians on every NHL team. And so you've got people in the different provinces and the towns throughout that cheer for a particular American team or states-based team, I guess, because of a player that's from an area that those fans might, uh, you know, live in. So, yeah, they'll have no problems cheering. I was just looking at um, the rankings in, over in the North American Hockey League, and uh, like I said, uh, the Wilderness are in second place right now, but uh, their playoff structure is just weird how they do it because they're, this year they're, they're going to do something different where the semis and the final are going to be down in the Dinah Braemar Arena. So what's going to happen is that the top four, last four teams are going to Edina on like Thursday night, and there'll be two games that day. So, like, say one plays four and two plays three. It's the best out of three series. Well, and that's the thing last year we talked about is there was some series that were best out of three, and then they had some series that were five, best out yeah. of five. But listen to this. And they were that best out of five was squeezed into the best out of three series. In the beginning, it's best out of five. Now yeah. you get into the semis. It's the best out of three for the semis. And then the winners of these two semi series, best out of three, play a one game championship. Huh. It's weird. Well, all right, it is. I and, agree. The, and now, because of Fairbanks being the top team, they get the home field advantage. So, the expense to travel to take your team up, you have to go up to Canada. It's amazing what the league, or I don't know how they work it, what the league helps out to these teams for the playoffs or what. What Canadian team? There's no Canadian team. Why are they going to Canada? Fairbanks is one of the teams in the North American Hockey League. Okay. Fairbanks and uh, Kenai River. Oh, and sure, sure, sure. Kenai is not going to make the playoffs. They've only right. got about 17 points the whole yeah. season. <laughs> but um, Fairbanks has 101 points. There's no other team comes close to that. So you mean Alaska? Yes. Not Canada. Oh, did I say Canada? You said Canada. I'm sorry. No, that, we forgive you. Okay. <laughs> Minnesota Wild, boy, I'll tell you, this is just a head scratcher why they can, you know, be so good and so dominant, and and then they seem to fall flat on their face. And uh, goaltending's been good. Uh, Devin Dubnik was named uh, NHL, I think he was player of the month for the month of March. Yeah, he was playing good. Yeah. Last night he wasn't. Yeah, it's it's not good that you can't keep your, your, your foot on the gas and and be that dominating team. But I see you've got the News Tribune there. UMD's Scott Sandlin was given a contract extension. Yeah, four years. Scotty will be around. 
Well, it'll be, uh, he'll be, what is he now uh, in on, under contract through 2020? I think it's, um, let's see, 2021, 2021 maybe. I think it's 2021. Well, yeah. good for him. Yeah, he'll, it says here he'll get 350000 in 2021. He'll get, and he'll start at 300000 17, 18, and it goes up a little bit each year to get up to the 350. You know, let's face it. This team didn't do well during the regular season. They went into the playoffs with only 18 wins, but they earned the right to go there, and they played well. Uh, this game against Boston College that they lost could have easily won. You and yep. me could that, easily be in this tournament. That Hobie Baker final, four. final three there, that goaltender, he uh, helped them out big time in that game. He made a lot of good saves. Yeah, and um, and I got. I think this is good news. Um, next year, it's nice to see uh, some of these players stay in. Uh, usually they go or sign their contracts because uh, one more year they're free agents. And that's why a lot of pro teams like to sign them after their junior year because they don't want to take a chance of losing that draft pick. Well, we know Dominic Toninato will stay. And uh, Carson Susi. Yes, He'll stay, and Ayafala already said he was going to stay. And so he's a free agent anyhow, but uh, Toninato and Susi are both um, draft picks yeah. in the pearls. So. Yeah. So that the Wild have uh, Susi, and Toronto has Toninato. And so that's that's going to make this team a lot stronger with those two coming back. And I'm just looking at the, some of the, like I say, some of the kids. They're going to have some... I think they're going to be very good offensive because they got Aya Fall, Tononano, Adam Johnson in the first line, and probably on the second line is going to be Carson Kuhlman, Jared Thomas, uh, Kyle Osterberg. So that, I mean, man, that can be a good second line too. And then they got some players that uh, put a lot of time in, uh, like um, Sammy Spurra, last couple of years. What about Billy X? He didn't play too many games yeah. his first year, but... Um, they're going to have extra kids. Right. But some of the, we're going to have another big D coming in, Nick Wolf. Remember him from Egan? I'm not, yeah, Egan. He's playing in juniors two years, big boy. Is he? So, yeah. Good. So he'll be coming in. And uh, I don't know these other kids because uh, most I think that two of them are Canadians. But uh, we're getting three or four defensemen coming in. But then on the, coming back from the defense is Susie. Raskob, um, Dan um, Molinar, uh, Nick McCormick, and Pionk, Neil, Neil Pionk. So we got some good kids coming back on D, so I think we're going to be very strong. I just, my worry right now is going to be goaltending. Well, I was just going to say, too, who's on the roster? But who, who's the goalies on just the roster? Just Nick Deary and uh, this uh, Hunter Miska. Who's an incoming yes, player. Right. So Deary's, what, a sophomore next year? Yeah, he'll be a sophomore. Okay. All yeah. right. And yeah. then they still have to find another goalie right. to add to the roster. Right. So it's mandatory that no, they, they carry don't have three to, goalies? But, uh, what if one gets injured and another one doesn't? <laughs> All right. Do you know of any teams, Jer, in the college ranks that only carry two goalies? I've never looked at it that closely, right. but no. Yeah. Usually there's always that one goalie. They might be on a practice squad or something like, you know. Because the they NHL. Pra they practice with the team all the time, so they have some. Okay. All right. The yeah. NHL can go out. You hear of it. Even the Wild did it here last season, maybe, where they have that uh, guy that's now a banker. You know, and he laces up, and he's their emergency goaltender. Oh, I think there was a game, wasn't there? And I just heard of one recently. I think it was the Phoenix Coyotes not too long ago. The college, they can't do that. You have to have that guy on the roster. Right. You can't just go out and say, hey, we got to. What, what would happen if, if you had both goalies? You'd have to dress somebody that uh, that's already on the roster. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of games I looked on the bench that they had uh, two other goalies on the bench there this for UMD this year. McNeely and this Deary. Mm -hmm. So maybe, I I don't know, I think you might be able to have an, 21 kids dressed, have that third goalie, you know. So I don't know. I have to check with that. I have to ask someone on that. 
because it is kind of funny how when did they get this extra guy? Because you don't really need two dress extra. I mean, but we'll find out. How impressed are you that uh, Hackstall left North Dakota and went to coach Philadelphia in the NHL? And I don't know, they're on the verge of not making the playoffs, but. You got to call this season a success for him, I would think. Right now, they're one point over Boston to make the wild card. But it's a funny thing about it, Boston's only one point from making the top three teams in the Atlantic Division because <laughs> Detroit just by just passed them this weekend to 91 points. But um, Philadelphia only played 78. They have four more games, so they got a good chance if they play halfway decent to yeah. make the playoffs, Yeah, I think. So you'd have to call his first season in Philadelphia as a pro coach uh, some, I, I would somewhat say, of a su success. I would say that. Yeah. Very much so. Yeah. And, hey, I didn't – it's kind of weird to go. That's a – I don't know. Philadelphia, that's a tough – Sports town. Oh my goodness! You bet. Regardless of the sport, yeah. I mean, yeah. if you don't win, and oh you're yeah, gonna... they crucify you, the yeah. fans and the media. Oh, yeah, you bet. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. But um, like I said, uh, Dallas is looking like uh, they're going to be the number one team, and the Wild, which they should make it, that last playoff spot, should be playing each other in the playoffs. But same Does, old team, St. Louis are going to be back in there, Chicago, Anaheim, L.A., and San Jose. It seems like the same teams every year. Nashville. Yeah. 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 That's funny. Hmm. Well, uh, see, we uh, talked with uh, Tim Cortez today on the KDL, a Monday Morning Sports Talk, and he's got a art show coming up April 14th through June 2nd, opening April 14th from 5 to 7 uh, Tim Cortez, a local, uh, well, hockey player, hockey dad, and artist, and he uses... Now, where is this going to be? This is going to be down at the Duluth Art Institute, uh, the Duluth Art Institute Depot Galleries, sp sponsored by the Depot Foundation, and they've got a website, DuluthArtInstitute.org, that's DuluthArtInstitute.org, April 14th through June 2nd, so a seven-week period of uh, the artwork of uh, Tim Cortez, uh, it's going to be titled Hat Trick, will be on display at the Duluth Art Institute, so be sure to check that out, and uh, we'll talk more about that because it's a seven-week long event. So that's at the depot? Yeah, it, 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 down at the uh, Heritage, uh, what is it, the Heritage Duluth Art Institute. So it's on Michigan depot Street, galleries. the 6th Avenue yeah. West. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, with that, uh, the Minnesota Hockey Connection, uh, you can find us online, mnhockeyconnection.com, and go to our Facebook page, Minnesota Hockey Connection, and like us on Facebook. I'm Kenny Callagher, and for Jerry Burrow, uh, we'll be back here, Jerry, uh, next week to drop oh, the puck. I got, I'm oh. going to be at the Frozen Four, and I won't be able to get playing back until Tuesday night, so we're going to have to skip a week. Well, we're going to be off next week, but we'll be back the following week, so look for a rerun next Monday. But uh, Oh, and the, to the staff at PAC TV. PAC TV uh, produces this show. We want to thank them as well. And, uh, well, we'll be back here uh, two weeks from Monday to do it again. We'll see you then.